guys how y'all doing welcome back to motivations and memoirs my name is Iberica and you are in the segment of the channel where a Bible study is done of course we are in the revelation series and if you have not yet seen the other videos click in the description box and you will find lesson 1 to 11 yes this is lesson 12 and we are now moving over to chapter 5 I want to observe today the four important facts in chapter 5. Now, of course, I am encouraging you as I encourage myself. We are living in perilous times. We need to ensure that we are walking and talking with Jesus. means that we need to ensure that we are remaining in the presence of Almighty God. Let us ensure that we remain in the presence of God because it is only when we remain in the presence of God we will be able to connect with God and to know what is happening. Being with the Lord, the Bible says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. It means that He will pre-warn us of the dangers ahead. He will say, don't go there, don't walk there, get up move now bless god and so i encourage you as i encourage myself daily as i pray i ask the lord keep me in as the lord keep me in your presence and if anything is going to pull me out of your presence sit on me holy ghost so that i will be reminded shut your mouth don't get angry don't this don't that remain in the presence of almighty god now guys if this is your first time a special welcome to you and remember give a thumbs up to the video share this allow this the teachings of the gospel to go viral by sharing it because somebody needs to hear the word of god somebody needs to be reminded that jesus christ is coming somebody needs to understand the things that will happen before christ comes back to earth to re to set up the new heaven and the new earth amen okay let us pray father i just bless and exalt you lord thank you for this great opportunity and it is called life lord i pray for your divine intervention in this few minutes lord may you direct may you inspire and lead father remember every person who will tune in i pray that the holy spirit will captivate their hearts that their minds will be saturated with the word any person lord who has doubts oh god will find new assurance to stand on lord those who still have not surrendered to you will mighty god be convicted to give their hearts to you take control lord i pray in jesus name okay so it is revelation 5 and let me quickly read through a few verses and john said i saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back sealed up with seven seals and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to break its seal? And no one in heaven or on the earth or underneath the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. And I began to weep greatly because no one was born worthy to open the book and to look or to look into it. And one of the angels said to me stop weeping behold the lion that is from the tribe of judah the root of david has overcome thank you jesus so as to open the book and its seven seal and i saw between the throne with the four elders with the four living creatures sorry and the elders a lamb standing as if slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent out into all the earth and he came and took it out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne and when he had taken the book the four living creatures and the twenty 
four elders fell down before the lamb, having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy art thou to take the book and to break its seal, for thou wast slain and didst purchase for God with the blood, with thy blood, men from every tribe and tongue and people and a nation and i am going to stop there because of time please read through to the end in your own time sort of the the four important facts that i want to observe in chapter five of revelation is one the scroll two the great question three the lion and finally the lamb so of course a scroll is a paper that is made from yeah more than one material that it is made from however the most common commonly used um paper or material that makes a scroll is called a parchment paper now a scroll is in a, the form of a coil and when it is not being used it is they probably use something to secure it maybe a seal of some type and then it is carefully put aside to be used at an next time now the children of Israel didn't have the written word like us we don't even need to work with Bibles anymore because we have phone I mean Bibles on our phones etc nevertheless the word of the Lord stands sure amen so that is the scroll now as we continue to examine john's visions we realize that this particular scroll in chapter 5 is of utmost importance and very significant and this is because it contains a revelation of what god has determined for the future course of the world and all humanity now the scroll describes how the world will be judged and portrays the final triumph of God and his people over all evil what a day that will be when each seal is open a portion of the book's content is revealed in, 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 in John's vision and we will see all of this when we move over to chapter 6 of Revelation now the scroll of course is unique God says he has sealed it with seven seals. Now in Ezekiel 2 verse 9 and 10, Ezekiel says, and let me read, And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Now, God had also revealed to Daniel the events that will precede his second coming in the tribulation by sending Michael the archangel. Daniel had asked some questions about the end of time and of course the Lord sent it via, Daniel, via Michael the archangel in Daniel 12 verse 8 to 9. Now, what happened? Daniel says, and let me read, although I heard I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Now, this means that until the events recorded here in chapter 5 occur, the seals are closed. The scroll remains sealed, in other words. However, it will be opened by Christ at the beginning of the great tribulation. Now, Revelation 5 and verse 1 says that these things written in the scroll are now to be brought out into the open. And that was the vision that John was sharing. And this will occur. It must occur because the word of God stands predominant and it cannot change. Now, of course, in the same Daniel chapter 12 and verse 12, the, the scripture explains that some persons would be purified many persons would be would be purified during this 
tribulation, great tribulation. Because we have the tribulation period, which the body of Christ and everybody will go through. And then you have the great tribulation, and this will come after the body of Christ is taken away. Right? So Daniel explains that during this time, many would become pure. So in other words, people would surrender their lives to God, but many will also remain wicked. And this is the two, how should I say, two if effects or twofold effects that will happen. Persons will be purified, persons will become wise, and as such they will understand that, oh my God, this was what my grandparents were, were, were telling me. This was what I heard the preacher say. And so they're they're going to become wise and they will turn to the Lord. But others, the second effect is that others will remain wicked and refuse to repent. Now, in the Great Tribulation, the the 144 thousand people that are saved recorded in revelation as being saved note that these are the jews jesus christ is giving them another opportunity to preach christ so they did not accept him when he came because their king could not come and burn in no manger. And so they rejected him. But during the trip, the great tribulation, they will know their eyes will be open. Just as all some people, some unsaved people that were preaching to know and they don't believe us or they think that they have time. And when they realize that when, 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 the, when the church is gone, then they will realize that, my God, this was what the preacher woman was saying. This was what the pot preacher man was saying. This was what my mother was always telling me, telling me and etc and etc so they will now give their lives to the lord but it's not going to just be so easy and that is why it is important that we you have the opportunity now you are free nobody is holding a gun or a knife or a machine at your head you can walk into the church of the living god and give your life to the lord i'm not have a kid don't even have to walk into church you can right now if you're listening to me you can ask jesus to come into your heart and when you're done you find a bible believing church a church that preaches and teaches holiness holy consecrated living you can do it now but if you refuse to do it now then there's going to come a time when your salvation is going to be at the cost of your blood you're going to have to shed your blood because you're going to ask to deny christ or decide that you're not going to deny it and of course you will pay with your life but this 144,000 saved people will be jews and they know will begin to preach Jesus and during their preaching others too will come to know the Lord remember all of this as I said will happen after the departure of the church those who are ready and keeping their lamps tuned up and filled with oil now the second thing I, that, that I want to observe in chapter 5 of Revelation is the search this great search for the one who is worthy to open the scroll and so revelation 5 and verse 3 this 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 scroll deal with the last seven years of israel's judgment i just said it the, the, the judgment of the jews but through this judgment redemption will be handed down to them and during this great tribulation they will come to accept Jesus Christ and be redeemed. Now, Gentiles, as I said earlier, will also be given the opportunity to receive the light. But remember, it's not going to be easy. Now, verse 3 proclaims that no man was found worthy to open the book and, and lose the seal. And so John got perturbed. But this, however, shows the worth of man. And oh, I mean, our own inabilities, our own finite minds and, and, and everything. Oh, we can't save ourselves. 
We are not worthy. None was found in heaven, the scripture says. None was found in earth. None was found underneath the earth. And so Papa John, Brother John, Uncle John, put on a piece of barley. Why did John weep? He wept, of course, because he knows the significance of the opening of the scroll. Unless somebody was found worthy to open the scroll, the events of the tribulation could not occur. So the Jews would not be saved. Those persons who are going to be saved by their blood could not be saved. And that would mean that God's promises to Israel and the world of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ could not happen. And so John wept. John knew, however, that the promises of God are true and that God is faithful and that he would fulfill what he has started. But then, in his own finite mind, he forgot that for a brief moment and he began to weep. God had placed a curse on the earth at the fall of man in Genesis 3, 14 to 19. And this curse had to be removed. And John knew that. He was reminded, even though he wept, he knew the great significance of this curse being removed. Right? He knew that there had to be the millennium kingdom and the reign of Christ fulfilled as was promised. However, the third aspect in chapter 5 is the lion. And so Christ is pictured as the lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Of course, this indicates that he will rule all the earth because he is not just the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the Messiah and the eternal soon coming king. Genesis 49 and verse 8 had already spoken about the lion of Judah. It says, 49, 8 to 10. Judah, you are he whom your brother shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's well. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down, he, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Now, the lion was found worthy. He was the only one who was found worthy. Bless God. And the next event so we see Jesus portrayed as the lion and now we are about to see him portrayed as the lamb. Verse, verse, um, well, throughout Revelation, before I go to the verse, throughout the book of Revelation, the foremost symbol for Christ is the lamb. We find this in Revelation 6 and verse 7. John said, I watch as the lamb opened the first seal. Chapter 12 and verse 11 says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and of course by the words of our testimony. Chapter 15 and verse 3 chapter 17 and verse 14 chapter 21 and verse 22 and chapter 22 Verse 1 and 3 are also scriptures that speaks about the lamb, this symbolic lamb that Revelation portrays. From Revelation, from chapter 1, it speaks about the lamb. Now, Christ as the lamb represents his giving of himself upon the cross for our sins. Now, that is why he was the only one who was found worthy, the lion of the tribe of Judah 
and the lamb that was slain. When in, in, in John, St. John 1 and verse 29, when John the Baptist recognized Jesus was walking towards John the Baptist, they never ever met before, except in the spirit when, when, when Elizabeth and Mary went to, 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 to visit and then the babies, so Elizabeth's baby John and Jesus' baby, the Bible says that they were quickened, right? So virtually the movements happened and so the boat mothers realized that they weren't carrying just a normal child, right? But when John saw Jesus coming, instantly he recognized him and he cried out, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. In Philippians 2 and verse 10 to 11, Paul says, And that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Who am I talking about? Who is this lamb? Our chief cornerstone. Our shepherd. The king of kings. The light of the world. The savior. The prince of peace. The Emmanuel. God with us. Now, there are some persons who refuse to bow. Refuse to acknowledge him as Lord. But there is coming a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. Verse 12 of Revelation says, The elders worship, saying, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, might, honor, and glory, and blessings. 14. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, be blessing and glory and honor forever and ever. Christ's judgment, friends, will be on those who rejected the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. He gave his all. He gave up his splendor. He gave up his life. The Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man would give up his life for his friends. You're listening to me. If you were the only person on earth, Christ would still have died for you. He is the one with the seven horns showing how he rules. He is a ruler and how he rules in power and in strength. My friends, we are living in a crazy, messy, filthy, dirty world. And as we have to live in this world but Christ remind us that we must not be a part of the world we must not be a part of the systems of the world but we must anxiously wait and pray for deliverance from this world we must intercede for Christ's coming kingdom when we shall be changed from mortal to immortality what a day that will be and reign with him not anywhere over yonder, but we're coming right back here on earth. Earth is so beautiful, right as it is. Just imagine, after Christ destroys this earth and then a new earth is formed. Just imagine how beautiful that new earth will be where there will be no, no need for fear, no war, no crime and violence. We won't sin, mighty God of Daniel. We won't need to work to earn a living. We don't have to worry about JPS and internet and all of that. We will be okay because we will be with the King. Aren't you waiting for that day? Aren't you anxiously waiting for that day when deliverance will come from sickness, deliverance from pain? Some of us, we're going through life and we're in so much pain, but there is coming a day when we will be released from all our struggles and this devil who tempts us and, and, and beat us up will be cast away to eternal damnation. We won't have any devil to contend with. 
Let us live for that day, my friends. As you go, walk good. And remember, stay in the presence of God. Prepare yourselves that however it is, whichever comes first, you will be ready to meet the king because we shall see the king enough. He is coming back. Whether we're ready or not, whether we believe it or not, Jesus Christ is coming back. And he is coming back to pay every man according to the way we work, according to the way we lived. We are going to be paid. So let us be careful how we live. Let us be careful even how we treat others because we shall be rewarded for that. So you walk with my gentle, loving people. And as you go, if you did not subscribe, please remember to do so. Please also remember to share the word of God and let it go out so that others will hear about the soon coming kingdom and run come in the ark before it is closed. God bless you. See you next time as I go over to chapter 6 and now look at the openings of the seals. My God, may the Lord help us as we keep ourselves in his presence. God bless. Thank you.